Hi everyone, so today I'm doing an oil painting and it's a landscape, a snowy landscape with kind of silhouettes of trees in the foreground. Um, my reference image for this came from Morgue File. As usual, I'm not sponsored by them, I just think they're an amazing website. Basically, they have loads of pictures and you're allowed to use them for anything artistic as long as you're not just reposting that photo. So you could edit it, you could paint it, you could draw it and that's fine. So I'm doing this on some MDF board that I've primed with gesso, sanded a bit, made it nice and smooth. Um, and the MDF board was cut by my boyfriend's granddad. He's really helpful. Um, he gave me a load of frames and then he cut some MDF to fit all of the frames so that I can make loads of framed paintings and it's super cheap that way. I'm mostly using the De La Rowney Graduate Oils, but I also have another set of oil paints I can't remember the brand of, that I... To be fair, I don't know if I use them in this. I might have, I might not have, but I'll leave in the description both of those. And then random paintbrushes. These blue ones you see me using, which I use for most of the piece, they're just Amazon ones, they're pretty cheap. But they haven't shed a single bristle, so I'm really impressed. And they're very soft as well, they've held up really well with my, obviously with oil paints I've used like paint thinner and everything, it's all been fine. So I've let the sky and the ground dry and I'm working on the kind of hedges and trees in the background. Now, I don't know if it's just my black oil paint or every black oil paint, but to thin it enough for it to be like really easy to glide over everything is really not very opaque so if I was to do this in the future I'd probably use my black acrylic ink because it took a lot of layers and just made it a lot more awkward to deal with. Obviously every time you go over a small thin line you've got the risk of going out that line and kind of ruining it and having to thicken it. So yeah definitely not ideal, definitely will use black acrylic ink in the future or if I get a new set of oil paints and the black is more pigmented than this, then I'll use that. <laughs> so I'm just adding all the little details. I've got different brushes this time. I genuinely have no idea where this brush, these red ones even came from. Um, I was given them and I don't know where they're from and I don't think they say their brand on them either. I'm just going over some of the bits. having a bit of a hard time because the paint isn't quite as thin as I'd want it to be. If I thinned it anymore it'd like hardly show up. So <laughs> not great. You can see my brush cleaner on the right hand side. That is General's Master Brush Cleaner, brush soap, something like that. I'll leave it in the description. It is so good for oil painting brushes. The way I clean my brushes is after I'm done with them, at the end of my painting session, I'll use like a pipette to drop a few drops of paint thinner on my brush and then I'll wipe it on a piece of kitchen towel to get like the majority of the pigment out and I'll do that with all the brushes I've used and then I'll go to the sink, use that brush cleaner there, rub the brushes around in the soap and it does a really good job at cleaning them. It also conditions them quite well, so it kind of helps them recover from the fact that they're being used with paint thinner and things that don't treat hair very nicely. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I actually, um, on that right hand short bush, I actually smudged it, so then I added the leaves. I was going to do leaves anyway, but I decided to do it earlier after I did a massive smudge with my finger by accident. Is the con of using oils for something you actually do want to dry fast is it doesn't. <laughs> but I really enjoy doing the uh, sky and the snow in the foreground with it. Um, I really liked how the clouds worked actually because if you look at a cloud it's not just white it's got like a kind of outline-y thing but not an outline. It's got like a different colour around the edge. Um, and when I've tried to do that in acrylics and stuff, that's been really difficult. But when I did it with the oil, and I just like blended the edge a bit with a brush, it just happened on its own. And I glazed a little bit of pink at the bottom of the sky, just to give an impression of the sun starting to set slightly. 
And the snow is pretty simple, it's just white and then blending in a little bit of blue um, as kind of shadows to show that the snow isn't flat because the field underneath wouldn't be flat. Um, and then I added a little bit of yellow in as well in some places just to make it look like there is sunlight there and it's not flat. So I'm just adding in more leaves. The way I do those leaves is I get my paintbrush with almost no paint on it and then like dry brush it on. So the background's dry and um, there's not much paint on the brush so it's not just going to leave a big splodge. This piece, I mean you can probably tell from the scale of my hand, but it's about A5. I do have small hands, so maybe it's looking a little bit bigger than it actually is. I use um, old photo frame as a palette, you can see on the left there. That's a photo frame, you know, the ones that don't have like an edge, they just have ugly clips, which are kind of really ugly as actual frames, but if you use like tape around the edge so that you don't lean your hand on any sharp glass, it's great to use as a glass palette. It's a lot more sturdy than just taking the glass out of a frame because it's still on a backboard. Uh, and then, of course, it's really easy to reuse, you just use a glass scraper. Um, which is basically just a blade with a handle and you scrape the paint off when it's dry. Also it's really fun to keep the leftovers, maybe that's just me, but it's like really interesting to see what colours I've been using. Just adding some branches at the edges to make it look like the scene continues outside of my painting, because it does, but you kind of forget about that sometimes, you just kind of think of the things that are central to it, but when you're doing a landscape, it's unlikely that you're just going to see the things in the centre, there are also other things there quite often. So that's the finished piece, uh, now you can see it in its frame, I really like the frame, I think it goes really well with the painting. Um, yeah, I hope you like it. If you want to see more videos from me, I do like oil painting, Copic drawings, watercolours, coloured pencils. I do some art supply reviews sometimes. Depends if I've bought any art supplies recently that I think are worth reviewing and people actually care about. <laughs> but yeah, those are the kind of videos I do, so subscribe if you want to see those, and thank you for watching!